Washington football. Woo! Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Burgundy Zone. I am your host, Kyle. I am joined by my co-host, Mr. Michael Hall. Welcome to the Burgundy Zone. This episode is called Whipping Up Brownies. You know, I'm smelling it. I'm smelling the brownies in the air. It smells delicious. We're cooking it up. We're chefing it up. It's about to be out of the oven here very, very shortly. But the Burgundy Zone is a part of the Frederick Podcast Network. You can find out more by going to www.listenfrederick.com. Fresh. Fresh batch of brownies out of the oven off of Washington, whipping them up 34 to 13. Before we get into the actual game hall and kind of talking about the stats and what transpired in this game, it wasn't it awesome just to see from a fan perspective, the fan base showing out and dominating that stadium and then the team actually following through in the same aspect? 1,000%, One thousand percent, like just to to see it on all over social media, to see it on the TV while I'm watching the game live, to hear the broadcasters talking about it. I mean, literally, like this is like the first time in many, 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 many a moons that I've had fun. I've had just like proud. I've been proud to not even only just go to the games and watch the games, be a fan of this team. Like this is like some not even like historical stuff, but like this is like some. It's been it's been brewing and it's finally so great to come back type of stuff that like I'm just happy that everyone's getting to experience what the old timers like to say, like the old like the great days, the old days, because this is what it felt like back in the days, like people that like our dad's age and people like that, where they, it was nothing to beat the Browns. It was nothing to beat people by 30s. It was nothing to blow teams out back then. It was normal to people like that. So I'm just happy that people that are our age that are younger are finally getting to experience a winning product and be proud and be joyful and be happy again on Sundays. Shout out to everybody that went out there. I wish I could have went today. Dario actually hit me up and was like, Hey, I got tickets. Someone got sick. You want to go with me? Should have went. I know I should have, but you know, we had the baby shower yesterday. I had to like help out uh, with congratulations again, sir. If you guys weren't aware, Hall's got a little one on the way, obviously. Yeah be here soon too but yeah and i already got a couple of commanders onesies on the way so she's oh, stepping into a great time to be a commanders fan but no nah, man shout out to everybody that went out there represented and i'm glad that we are back in full force absolutely and it really was awesome to see you could hear the stadium on um, on the broadcast i think greg olson did a really good job of kind of just explaining what the fan base is feeling right now in the terms of hope and so, everything where With the times that we went to the playoffs, it was much more of that late surge in the season, seven-game stretch, whatever have you, to be able to get there. This is a much different feeling. And honestly, like we we would have people ask us in the preseason, the offseason, do you think the Commanders can win the NFC East? And one of the things that I said back then was, I don't want to take out, out of consideration that Washington could catch fire. You know, like, I don't want to put that out of the realm of possibility. I think that is a real possibility that that could happen. And it's so awesome to see it happen. But the funny thing is about this game, the dominance of the 34 to 13, it wasn't just the offense like it has been in in past games. You know, like this was defensively seven sacks on the day. Frankie Louvu probably having one of the best games of his career, two and a half sacks, Force fumble, uh, being or fumble recovery. Bobby Wagner getting into the mix with six tackles, one and a half sacks. Jonathan Allen got a sack. Dorrance Armstrong got a sack. Uh, Dante Fowler got a sack. I even saw something on Twitter. It said uh, that Deron Payne and Jonathan Allen were playing rock paper scissors to stay on yeah. the who, who's going to stay on the field for that last third down. Awesome, yeah. but we can't take. We, we do have to acknowledge the fact. We had our backup quarterback playing with like ten minutes left bro, in the fourth quarter, bro. <laughs> bro, when whenever I saw Mariota walk out there, my first thought literally was not even just like because I had the over in the game. So my first thought was also honestly was like, come on, man, I need some points. Like, why are we put Mariota in the game? But my second thought was instantly went to, I cannot remember when they right. said, "Hey, hey, backups, like, go get yours. Go ahead, go go do your thing." It has been so long since that happened as a Washington fan to watch like to see that happen. I was like literally like like the Pikachu like gif where he's like 
<laughs> like, yeah, so, nah, shout out to the offense, man. Shout out to Cliff. Shout out to Jaden Daniels. Shout out to B-Rob. Shout out to the O-line. But like you said, it's crazy because this is what we thought what it was going to be like coming into the season where the defense was going to be the ones that were leading the way while the offense kind of found their footing, caught their ground, then caught fire. It's been opposite these past couple of weeks, but it seems like we'll see what happens next week with the Ravens, but the Browns, I mean, to get seven sacks in the NFL, to beat up a team that bad, no matter who's playing out on the field, as a whole, defense as a whole, definitely shout out to them because they've gotten better and better each week. It yeah, seems like. look, we got to talk about the offense um, because early on in that game, I saw a lot of tweets saying that this was Jaden Daniels' probably worst performance of the season. But honestly, when you look at the numbers, 14 of 25, 238 yards, one touchdown, one interception, 11 carries for 82 yards. Yep. As much as it was kind of a slow start for Jaden Hall, I like he, he really made up for it, you know, and he did a fantastic job. That I feel I'm so happy for Diami Brown, two receptions yep. for 57 yards and a touchdown. He easily had two to three yards of separation on that touchdown catch. Jaden puts it on the dot to the point where he's like walking into the end zone. Diami's like making sure that he has two feet in. He even has like six or seven at that point. But what what I saw in this game was, yeah, you saw the hiccups from Jaden early on. And it, and it was obvious that Jim Schwartz and company were able to kind of get after him a little bit. But his ability with his legs to get out and to be able to make something out of nothing, you, those 30-yard runs, that 34-yard run that he had was absolutely beautiful. Uh, yep breaking the ankles of Jeremiah Wusu koromoa mm -hmm. being able to get outside of him and being able to run downfield. And, and it's funny because it's when you watched his pre-draft film, it was like when he did those types of runs, there was a big hit happening. In these games, he's doing and he's getting out of bounds. You know, it's not like he's absorbing that contact whatsoever. So he really has adapted that Lamar-esque type of way of knowing when to take the contact and when not to. I mean, hats off to the young man because he certainly did respond. And I'm trying to think of like when that click happened of in this game in particular where think it was going knuckle to knuckle. You know, it was a bare knuckle boxing match. And then all of a sudden, Washington, right before the half, they just turned the switch, right? No, nah, 100%. And I would say that, uh, yeah, I can't even really. I, I'm, it was probably honestly like a backbreaking third down that Jaden probably scrambled out and either threw it or ran for them where it was third and third and probably unmanageable. Jaden probably broke their backs, broke their will, and that was probably like the momentum swing that they needed to uh, kind of take the take the uh, take the rest of the game over. But no, nah, I mean, I don't even know what to say. Like, well, that was crazy. But no, um, um, no, nah, yeah, I mean, the defense went crazy. Louvin went crazy. Like, I don't even like. I'm not even like speechless. But this is like kind of just one of the things where it was like. This is the first. This is the first time we've seen a full, a full Washington team win, from start to finish, and going back to your point, it's like kind of like, I'm also I'm kind of looking at Jaden like he's Skynet from like Terminator. It's just like day by day, week by week, <laughs> what is he's it just the, like, are you in my head, dude? <laughs> he's growing, he's learning, and he's getting more and more. He's just like it's crazy, like to see it week by week, just like growth. It almost it's almost even like down by down type of thing where it's like and to your point where like people were saying this might not even be as like this might be his worst game and like if you look at the stats but like if you look at the eye test and like his third downs where he was just like 30 yards and 25 yards and 10 yards here and just scrambling out here and there i think that uh my it might obviously might not have been his best game this was definitely one where it was like this was not a bad game this is not even like a great game. This is somewhere in between good to great. And I just think that week by week, snap by snap, even like going back to like week one where Todd Bowles just like blitzed the heck out of him. Right. And it just seemed like he was kind of out of sorts, didn't know what was going on. Things moving too fast. Let me just get out the pocket, do what I do best. Now when it seems like teams are blitzing him, it's kind of like, I'm not going to go as far as like that Pat Mahomes where it just slows down, that Jordan S kind of like slow motion. I can process it, get it out. But it's almost kind of where it's like from week one to week five where all right, you, you can send the house to me, send the blitz at me. I'm either going to step up in the pocket, get around it, maneuver, or I'm going to I know where I know how much depth I need to get as far as like getting away from defenders so I can get outside the pocket and then make that play down the field, not even just run it. So 
man, it's crazy. It's a great time to be a Commanders fan, and week by week, this team is getting better, man. Like, sky's the limit at this point. Yeah, I was on the radio with AWOD earlier in the week, right? And I made the comment with AWOD on 910 The Fan saying, you know, it's not like Jaden is making these eye-popping plays. It's much more so of his execution and how he is able to execute these offenses, score these points. That's the big eye-popping thing that makes him a difference maker, almost to your point about being Terminator. It's like a death of a thousand cuts sort of way. But then he comes out today escapes out of that pocket, keeps his eyes downfield, and throws that freaking dime to Terry McLaurin on the run to his right, steps that foot down, and like like Michael Vick, who we had the interview with earlier in the week, that flick of the wrist, that flick boom, of the wrist. right into Terry McLaurin's bucket, dude. And obviously some people made the comment he should have scored that touchdown there. Look, I don't, I'm not going to sit here and – Terry, it's the NFL. There's a reason why. And honestly, if Terry tried to score a touchdown there – you you don't know if that would have caused an injury, you know. Just and they still get, got six anyway, so right. what does it matter? It doesn't really matter. So <laughs> at the end of the day, actually no, was that the? I think that was the pick, wasn't that? Oh, the you're sure that was the pick? You're right. Yeah, yeah. Um, but which I'm not going to. As you fall. can see, they bounced back, so it's all good. They did. Look, dude, that was an ass whooping today. Again, it really was, and a lot of credit to the defense. They were one for thirteen. The Browns' offense were on third down. <laughs> Crazy and, stat. Which we will get to here in a minute, but also. The time of possession, Washington won 31, 18, uh, 31 minutes and 18 seconds to 28 minutes of 42 seconds of the Browns. But the, obviously the sacks are the big difference maker there. And we're, we're going to get into that in a little bit. But Miles Garrett, we talked about him a lot this week and him being a man child, a freak of nature made in a lab type of guy. He didn't even show up on the stat sheet, my friend. Not even one tackle. And so credit to the offensive line. On the one, uh, I think it was the Jeremy, Jeremy McNichols touchdown. It might have been the Brian Robinson touchdown. Sam Cosme takes the freaking defensive tackle and drives him <laughs> into the earth in the end zone. They came to play today. And obviously, Sam gave up an early sack to, on Jaden Daniels early on in that game. But the difference between seven sacks and three sacks, that's the difference in this game right here. And obviously, Jaden's legs contribute a heck of a lot to that, right? Yep. No, 100%. And... Look, there are, there's going to be people out there that say, oh, well, Miles Garrett, he's on one leg. He's not the same Miles Garrett as he usually is. He's injured, da 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 Guess what? He didn't practice all week last week. He came out and got two sacks against the Raiders. So shout out to the offensive line once again. Shout out to Bobby Johnson. Shout out to Anthony Lynn. Shout out to Cliff Kingsbury. Coming up with the offensive scheme. Coming up with the running game. Coming up with the blocking schemes throughout the week to have these guys prepared for a freak of nature. That is Miles Garrett. One of the best two or three, or best two, not even three. One of the best two rushers in this game in yeah. the league right now. And yeah, like you said, seven to three. Like, look, three sacks. You don't want to give up many sacks, but for them, they have give up three sacks, but none of them come to Miles Garrett. I don't want to say I'll take that any day of the week, but for him to be ineffective and other guys, like that's what you want as a offensive line. To be honest with you, like obviously you want a clean sheet. You don't want to give up nothing, like no pressures, right. no sacks, whatever it may be. But as an offense, if you look at it, like okay. We give up three sacks, but the guy that we wanted to take out the game was ineffective, and we made other guys beat us. You'll take that any day of the week as a coach and as a team. Yeah, and Austin Eckler came back this week, six carries, 67 yards, two catches for 30 yards, and a touchdown. That screen pass was absolutely amazing. Yep. I thought on the – am I crazy for saying that on the TV broadcast it looked like there was a flag on that play, or did somebody throw up a pair of gloves? I think it might have been gloves or like some type of like uh, like shredding from a towel or something because I did see a flag, but yeah, that yeah, was yeah. crazy. I was like, oh no, of course it's coming back. But I know I, I I thought the same thing too. But I think it was I think it was like something someone dropped something like you said gloves or maybe it was like a something on the TV like the line on the first down was like glaring. I don't even know, but I thought the same thing too. That was insane, and a lot of credit to Austin Eckler coming back after with his concussion. Dan Quinn earlier in the week talked about how. Brian Robinson got a lot of carries last week. Obviously, he was on the injury report. Then he was good to go for today. It definitely seemed like later on in that game, they were making sure that Brian was going to be chilling. You know, yeah, and th yeah. that was kind of like the foreshadowing of what was going to happen with Jaden, almost in a way. 
But credit to him with two touchdowns on the day. He helped out tremendously. That first rushing where the linebacker tries to come up, make the tackle on him, that, that spin tackle on the legs. And Brian Robinson is able just to rush through that and be able to get out field. And Luke McCaffrey's block on the wide receiver. Yeah, on the, the, oh, hell of a block. Watching that game live, literally, like, I, obviously, I was like, yeah, hell yeah, B-Rob. But my, my first reaction was hell of a ceiling block by Luke McCaffrey on yeah. the outside. Like, that hell of a block but on that one. Hell of a that's a McCaffrey boy and they're going to work yeah. their ass off, you know, and that's exactly, and that's exactly what you showed there. Terry McLaurin did not have his best game and I'm sure Terry would sit here and tell you that, but that being said, four receptions for 112 yards. Exactly. He made the plays that he needed to obviously he did t uh, drop that touchdown pass. That was right in the buck. Another perfect one from Jaden Daniels. We call that a handoff. And but Perfect a lot, handoff. a lot of credit to Jeremiah Wusu Koromoa. I mean, that is one guy on Cleveland's defense that did come to play today. Having that forced fumble on Terry McLaurin was an absolute just bludgeoning of mm -hmm. that, like a Mike Tyson type of punch, mm -hmm. where he comes in there and knocks that thing out. Terry has to be better and smarter, not allowing that thing to be out there so much. But it's funny because everyone early on was like, "Is could Terry possibly be able to reach that a hundred yard, a uh, thousand yard mark?" And even though he kind of had a lackluster first couple games, he's roaring back, my friend. And he's making oh, yeah. a damn staple for himself right now. And I don't think it's that big of a concern. But before we get too wrapped up in everything, because we do have fan questions, I don't want to answer them before we get there. Uh, we do have a bunch. But I want to uh, go to this one first, because he submitted this, the first one of the day, Mr. Tony Franchise on Twitter. Thank you, Tony. Tony. How crazy is next week's game versus the Ravens going to be, Hall? Man, oh man, oh man! Uh, this is going to be the most one of the most hyped up games, of, especially the Ravens coming off the 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 win they just got today against the Bengals, overtime thriller, field goal winning game, high scoring game. Joe Burrow went absolute nuts today, insane, five touchdowns. But on the other hand, Lamar went absolutely crazy today. Derrick Henry, he had a was making game. Lamar type plays, dude. And he was literally thank game. you and. Derrick Henry had a great game as well, 92 yards on the ground and a touchdown. Um, yeah, man, I mean, it's going to be probably the most hyped-up game of the week. Talked about all the big networks. I said on Friday, uh, Danny from Grant and Danny treated, uh, tweeted out what Grant said as far as, like, a 3 and one team is different from a 4 and one team. And what he meant basically when, from that was, because obviously, like, uh, the team is better, they won the game. But what he meant was, okay, now you're four and one. The sample size is five games, five weeks. You have a higher chance of making the playoffs. Now it's like, okay, this is not just like, okay, they beat up on some bad teams. This is like, okay, this team might be for real now. And I, I tweeted out like, getting to four and one will have all the guys on first take, the Emmanuel Achos, the the guys, whoever it may be, all the people on those big networks talking about the headlines will be. Should we really start taking Washington serious? And like I said, this week is going to be uh, hyped up. It's going to be a big matchup. And I have full, full, full faith that these guys will not get too big-headed and too overwhelmed by the task ahead because Dan Quinn and his coaching staff has had these guys as cool as a cucumber these first five weeks of the season. I can't, I can't wait. Yeah, now the one thing that for me, I think that was confidence building for me just as a fan on the couch watching this. When they came out staggered, uh, you could say kind of slow in the first half, the way they ended that first half by going to be able to be up 24 to, uh, what was it, three or six at that? No, it was three because yeah. it was the Terry McLaurin fumble that got the field goal in the second half. So going up 24 to three, that really gave me confidence with this football team because, yeah, they've been humming recently. I mean, they've been r going, r just running rake shot on people. <laughs> The, when they're staggered, when they're actually getting hit in the face a little bit, they they actually have to battle this thing out. How are they going to respond? And that's what you saw. Like Jaden throws that pick, uh, and then they're able to still keep chumming, dude, still keep coming down the field and scoring the points that they need. Obviously, the defense is the big difference there, you could possibly say, because are they going to have that sort of success against the Ravens? Probably not, Tony. But just given that that confidence to say – that going against a very good football team like the Baltimore Ravens, 
that you have the confidence to know they're going to, even though regardless of how that game starts out, they're going to battle their ass off and they're going to fight. Bam. They're going to fight through it and they're going to do everything in their power to scrape, to claw, to be able to make that a football game. This is the first time that we've seen a competitive football team and the defense is getting a little bit better, right? They, they are doing what they need to do. Would love to be able to see Quan Martin come down with that interception yeah. that we truly needed there. But uh, Quan left and then came back in that game, of course. And so it looks like he's okay. I think it was just a shoulder injury. Um, but for me, Tony, this is going to be probably the biggest matchup in the DMV speaking because you and I both know Ravens fans. And they have had so much to say <laughs> over the years. And this is probably the first time that we can walk in with our chest poking out a little bit, you know. Yeah. And this is going to be huge just for the whole fact of the DMV and solidifying who the king is of the DMV. And obviously they have Derrick Henry, they have Lamar Jackson, of course, and they're going to be the big brothers, so to speak. But this far, little, little brother is not to be taken lightly, and I'm sure the Ravens know that. So I would say this is going to be probably the biggest matchup of Washington's season thus far. And I don't want to get ahead of my skis in that sense, but to be honest with you, they're 4-1. and one. They are generating a lot of momentum at this point. And like I talked about earlier, the building that confidence, you're really starting to see that in the football team itself to the point where the defense is now feeling themselves a little bit. Mm -hmm. And they have a, and like the funny thing is Lamar Jackson, of course, is a very good at escaping the pocket, keeping his eyes downfield, making plays. But so is our quarterback, and that's who they face every day in practice. So this is going to be a monumental matchup and to really gauge where this football team is. I've said this for a very long time. To be able to see how good Washington is is how they play the Ravens. And so yeah. it's it's gigantic. It's probably it's bigger than Derrick Henry, uh, to be <laughs> honest with you, Tony, is how big this matchup is going to be this week against and the Ravens. To, real quick, to your point about the confidence of the team, like – like, yeah, the defense is, like, still, like, like obviously the past two weeks they've been great, almost excellent. But, like, obviously, there's like you said, they're not – are they going to be that good against the Ravens? I mean, I would hope so. That would be that would be crazy and that would be great. But I'm going to err on the side of – they're going to give up a couple more plays here and there to a bigger explosive team like the Ravens and a better team like the Ravens. But I will say, for a defense that, like, yeah, they might have the bend but don't break mentality – to have a guy like Jaden Daniels on the other side of the ball for your team and to have an offense like this hum in, putting up 25, 30 plus points a game. And as a defender, you're just like, you know what? If we can just make one play, make one stop for our guy, get our just kind of like the Ravens kind of think to themselves, like, right. If we just get the ball back for Lamar one time, that extra possession, I know my guy's going to do something great with it. And I feel like our defense is kind of gaining that, like, that confidence of like, if we just make one stop, make that one play when the time is right and when it's needed and get the ball back for our guy, he's going to do something great with it. And to have that confidence throughout the team just bubbling up and almost overflowing, man, like next week's going to be crazy. Uh, yes. And it, we really are living the dream, uh, so to speak. And it's going to be a lot of fun. But now the next question we have is submitted by the Colonel. Thank you, Colonel. His question is, Hall, how can you not say the Redskins are not in the top five power rankings? Oh, teams were already putting us high up there like going into last week before this game. I mean, this I think this is going to be, because everyone said going in, this could be the trap game. This is going to be the best defense he faced. Jim Swartz, a coach throughout this league that's been well-respected, had a lot of great defenses throughout his career. Historical success against rookie Thank quarterbacks, you. by exactly. the way. Exactly, historical success. They put the graphic up on the TV if you're watching the game. Uh, he has like an 18-6 and six record against rookie quarterbacks, something crazy like that. Like you said, historical record, almost – Bill Belichick-esque type record almost. So for them to do that against that defense, again, with that guy, with those two guys on the opposite side of the ball, Denzel Ward, JLK, whoever I'm wanting to hear, Miles Garrett, top two, top three guy in the league, defender in the league, not even top two player in the league type stuff. So, yeah, man, like um, it's – yeah, this offense is clicking in all cylinders, and hopefully they can just keep on riding the wave, riding the momentum, man. We'll see how we'll see how it goes. Week five, week six is going to be a big one. I'll say that they shouldn't be in the top five of the power rankings. I'll just be honest with you. Uh, I haven't seen enough yet. You know, once we if we were to play the Ravens in this sort of way, then I would say without a doubt, let's put that on there. But 
Um, I don't think that just like people were saying, it was like I know Wale put out the tweet, "Is this a trap game?" and everything like that, which is just ridiculous to say in the NFL. I mean, it truly is. I would say only people thought it was a trap game because it's just based off the years past of like, okay, we've had a little bit of success, we're sniffing success. I know we're coming back home. This is not like the the team. The record that they have was not like well going into the game. Everyone thought it wasn't really reflective of the of the actual team themselves they got a lot of talent on that side so a lot of people thought like okay here we go again Washington feeling themselves getting talked about getting all the little buzz brought up about them getting talked about on the big stage here they come from the letdown here comes the the other shoe dropping type of thing and they're up here like Jackie Chan like wah like no 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 <laughs> wow. and I don't know what that was but that was I awesome know, I was yeah uh, just be, I'm just being honest Colonel um Way, the way they played these football teams, they've done a fantastic job. And obviously, they deserve all the admiration in the world, especially for somebody like me. And the, if you really covet the national guys and what they say about this football team and getting the light on them, then yes, of course. they. I think they all deserve it, especially the guys that have been here before. But this is truly the matchup this week coming up against the Ravens. And look, it's funny. We just played a football game, uh, and they just finished, what, not even an hour and a half ago. And we're already talking about the Ravens. It just goes to show how big of a matchup that truly is for yeah. this football team. But that's when I'll start saying that in the top five. Because honestly, at this point, they need to be working like they're being disrespected. That and, goes into the whole trap game as well. Because you're looking ahead to that big matchup. Right. And you, you you let the lesser team, which everyone looked at on paper, said, "You." Hit, when's the last time people have said, Adam Rank picked us to win a game? That's the crazy part. The dude never picks us to win a game. Even he picked us to beat the Browns. So that's what I'm saying. Like, a lot of people looked at it as, okay, they're the big matchup next week again is Baltimore. The lesser team is going to come out and have their way with us, and we're going to lose this game. Like, the the big letdown, like it always is. Shout out to Dan Quinn. Shout out to the coaching staff. Shout out to all the leaders on this team. Didn't let that happen today. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Absolutely right. Sorry, I'm trying to find um, the historical numbers from uh, Jaden Daniels. Uh, okay, Jane Daniels is the first player in NFL history to have at least 1,000 yards passing and 250 yards rushing in their first five career games, yes, which, go, which goes into the Colonel's next question. Still early in the season, but how can you not be excited about the historical statistics of our offense that our offense has been recording, specifically Jaden Daniels? Uh, I think you're absolutely right, Colonel. Um, I think there's nobody in the DMV that's not excited at this point that's a Washington fan. Um, it's... It's, it's just weird to see, you know, especially after week one. I think everyone was kind of humbling themselves coming into the season, saying rookie quarterback, they're turning over the roster. They're just getting starting started and building what they want and everything like that. But when you add that quarterback, and with the, I want to specifically talk about this because the VR was talked about immensely this past week. You're you know, the first one that brought that up before anyone that I even saw or heard about talk about that. So shout out to you for that one. I don't want to take credit for it um, because Tim, Tim Towner in our Discord, he's a LSU fan to an extent. And early in January of this year is when he uploaded that article of Jaden Daniels VR okay. usage at well, LSU. Shout out to Tim, then. Yeah. And so that's when, as soon as I saw that, I was like, well, that changes things because I really want to know more about this VR training because you see the cause and effect. You see the VR usage this past year going into it. Jaden Daniels putting up 40 touchdowns of four interceptions. You see the benefits of it. And I want more of it. I want to look into that a little bit more. And it was genius for Washington to go in and buy that. And so I think it, it really says a lot because obviously you could say, oh, every team should get the VR, right? But I don't think it's just the fact of having the VR. You have a quarterback who is not full of himself who says, I need to get better. I need to put in... When you have somebody where it's like somebody that's willing to work really hard and somebody who's willing to supply the resources in order for... And it's like that, that combination of things. And so I think the historical aspect of this is incre incredible because Washington got a player who is eager and invested into getting better. And they and then now we have somebody in place and ownership who's willing to supply those resources for that person to be able to get better. And it's not, and even, it's not even just the quarterback. They're also allowing the offensive line, other guys' positions to be able to use it. And just to put the 
the cherry on top of that whole thing. He's a guy that doesn't care about the the whole stats, this the the history aspect of like, oh, I'm doing this, I'm breaking this record. Da, 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 da. Like you said, he's just worried about. Okay, I came out and did that against the Browns. I'm gonna celebrate this with my guys. Great win. Da da da. da. Come Monday, Tuesday morning when I wake up, it's on to Baltimore. How can I get better against Baltimore? How can I? What can I? What slight advance can I get against Baltimore on their defense? And then he's just gonna get locked into that. So. He doesn't care about the accolade. He doesn't care about the off the field success, like the stats, the history of it. He just worried about what am I doing to make my team better? And to have a guy like that, like you said, that's humble and just is all about his teammates and is just like, man, like it's just working hard. We got it. We got us a special one, man. We got us a special one. Absolutely. And credit to Tim Towner for supplying that one Definitely. article. And ever since he said that, I've been beating that like a dead horse, saying I'm very yeah. invested in that. I want to see more of it just because I, I could see that competitive edge aspect of it and seeing what having a guy like Jaden Daniels and being invested into it, what that can do for you. And so that's why I've been really, really on it. I've been pressuring it. I've been putting my finger on it. And I'm so happy this organization is in the direction that it's in uh, because the future is bright to say the, the least. The last guy would have never even thought about investing in by, no. buying that system. It would have been, uh, he, he, he learned enough. He'll be good. He's, he's our guy. He's my guy. I'm so happy that they're like, you know what? What do you need, Jaden? Let us let us help you. What do you need to be great? Let us supply you with it. New era, man. It's crazy. And it is crazy to see that Washington can put in their own playbook. They it has Cliff Kingsbury calling the plays into Jaden yep. in that VR software. You could ask and do certain defenses that you could play against. You could change the difficulty, the speed. And so it's just a change. It's a game changer. And especially if you have a sponge that's willing to use it to get better, it, it changes the game of it all. And then adding that, I will say to a team that is not used to having fire, right? Like they're gasoline. They've been sitting here waiting to be ignited. They've just been sitting and waiting and having that ignited with a quarterback with that's invested, who is like the, the match you could say really has engulfed everybody. And you can feel the energy of that football team, the Island of Misfit Toys. They don't want to go back to the way it was before, like Jonathan Allen, Deron Payne, Terry McLaurin. They really are enjoying the fire that is engulfing the NFL at this point. And I'm glad and I'm so happy it is a dream. But I think the hardest diff part of it all is going to be having it continue and being consistent with it. And that's what Dan Quinn has been preaching uh, thus far is keeping everyone humble on the ground to, and being where your feet are, not getting ahead of your skis, uh, so to speak. Now, the last question from the Colonel, why the heck, what the hell clicked on our defense? Why are we good? Or we just play a crappy offense? Um, I think that I'd say a little, a, a percentage of it is yes, definitely the offensive offenses the past two weeks, even though today, Kyler Murray just seemed like he was going to – he was willing and able to run the ball today, which is crazy against his 49ers defense. But – so I would say that a, a small percentage of it is, yes, the offenses that we've gone against. But I would also say that a large percentage of it is what I kind of mentioned the last time we were on the pod, which is I feel like it, just, it was kind of just taking a while for this defense, new pieces, new scheme, new coaches, new everything, kind of not a lot of action in the preseason like a lot of teams do nowadays, obviously. So it was going to take a couple of weeks for them to kind of gel together. It was going to take a couple of weeks for Doran Armstrong to be like, okay, if I'm lining up to Payne, if he rushes this way, how do I want to react off of that? If I'm lining up to Johnny Newton, if he rushes this way, how am I going to play off of that? And I just think that they're all just kind of forming together, coming together. The communication on the back end is getting better because they were giving up big plays, the number one receivers. Like everyone thought coming in last week, Marvin Harrison, first drive of the game, ate us up, touchdown real quick. It was kind of silent the rest of the game. Everyone thought coming in this week, two pretty good receivers on the outside and Amari Cooper and Jerry Judy, who they get downplayed as kind of like not the best in the league, but those guys are great route runners. Yeah. The hands are kind of iffy and suspect at times, but those guys have speed, agility. They're twitchy. They're great route runners. So I expected them to kind of come in and maybe get theirs today for the most part. Defensive line, like I said, I feel like they're kind of gelling together now. Frankie Louvu was a man with his head on fire today, running around, flying everywhere. So I just think that a small percentage of it, and we'll see it going into next week as well against Baltimore. Like you said, this is the true test. This is a high-powered offense, kind of like Cincinnati. 
And so I do think that, uh, yeah, it's going to be a great test for this defense. We'll see that if it was really just the offenses or if it was a matter of, hey, this defense got off to a slow start. They needed to gel. They needed to get clicked together, get everything kind of sewed up. And now they're kind of moving in the right direction. So we'll see. Yeah, I, I don't think that it's a crappy offense. I just think that they are completely off the wagon and, and just in terms of themselves. Like you, you can see with our offense that everyone is on the same page. I just don't think things are clicking. But that being said, I don't want to take anything away from our defense. Fenerian Mathis, like literally running Hell over, of a game by Big Phil. Running over, uh, what is his name? Povich, um, I think their center. Running him over onto his butt and then being able to deflect that pass from Deshaun Watson was just like a, a really a foreshadowing of what was going to be happening on defense that uh, today. And when you're able to see the dominance from the defensive line and the, and the depth that they were, obviously Deshaun Watson was not himself today. And it's crazy to see because typically when quarterbacks come to Washington, they're usually yeah. hitting everything. You yeah, know? right. Yeah, right. And so like that wasn't the case today. And th that one. I think when they had to kick the field goal after the Terry fumble where Deshaun Watson is coming over to the sideline with the play clock running down and Stefanski has to take his headset off. He is just, he's like Flemish. He's just like, doesn't understand what's happening. It kind of just shows you where they are. But I will say this. I think a lot of that has to do with Washington's defense and what they did today. And I think a lot of credit to Dan Quinn and company, because I've said this many times, the team that you go into the season with, is different than the team that you leave the season with. And so they've had to kind of grow and move things around to try to find the right recipe, the right combination of players to put in there for the right times. And I think that the past two games, you've seen them kind of understand and get the clicking in that sense. Like uh, Mikey Samristil being on the outside more. Him coming up making that huge hit on Deshaun yeah. Watson, right? I like, love a game by him too. Absolutely great game by him. It just goes to show you that things are clicking. They're, they're starting to get they're that buying going. A, they're buying in more and more. Right. And so it's like much more so of them growing into themselves and finding out who should be where, what they should be doing, and what's going on in that aspect. So I think this team is – you're. it's not really – I think it's probably a combination of both. But ultimately, I think the Browns' offense is a hot mess just in terms of everyone being on the same page. They're not far off. I don't think this is a far-off team by any stretch. Um, but it's just they need something a little bit more, and they weren't going to find it today against Washington because of Frankie Louvu, because of Bobby Wagner. Bobby Wagner sitting up in front of Deshaun Watson and going, <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's my boy, man. You know, I've called out Bobby a bunch of times. But, dude, Bobby, because especially against their, going into against Arizona, I thought Kyler could possibly manipulate some things. But Bobby has answered the call. And this yeah. defense has answered the call. And my goodness, have, do they deserve the game ball, game beers? It, who's somebody that you think deserves a game beer before we start answering other questions? Oh, man. I got to go with Big Phil just because he's been talked about, dragged through the mud. Why did we waste a second round pick on this guy? Da 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 da. And then for them to trade off Ridgeway and keep Mathis at the end, at the, uh, end of training camp. A lot of people said, oh, why do they get rid of Ridgeway? He's been more productive. What do they see in Big Phil? He can't even stay on the field. Well, you're seeing the fruits of, even though Ron's a guy that drafted him, you're seeing the fruits of the new coaching staff getting the best out of that guy and him being healthy for the most part. But they're seeing the fruits of the coaching staff, the labor of DTAP and those guys coming out and saying, hey, we saw the talent in this guy. We can bring it out of him. We can get the best out of him. And you're seeing that right now. Big Phil had a hell of a game. Definitely a, a, a game beer for him. Yes. Um, and somebody else I think that deserves a game beer, Benjamin St. Juice. I think that he did a very good job today. Um, the yep. entire offensive line deserves it, uh, to be honest with you. Miles Garrett, obviously I said it before, Not he wasn't on the stat sheet. Did he even uh, play today? It was crazy. Dude, not even on the stat sheet. Not even one tackle. <laughs> I looked at it again just to make sure like two or three times. Like, Am <laughs> right. I missing his name on here? No, he just was not there. Uh, so a credit to them for doing what they needed to do. I think the defense all together, they all deserve just one big giant keg. Um, and yeah. hopefully Bobby Wagner starts it off by doing the keg stand, of course. But I, I want to say this. Uh, this question was submitted by Arch in the Discord. He said, can I get two claps and a Ric Flair? Woo! Woo! That was an ass whooping, bud. Man, it was an that's ass, ass part two. Yes, and look, it, with... 
you know what they're going to say that this is just a bad team, just like of they course. say every other. Look, like I said, it'll be the haters will come out. It'll say, "Oh, it's a bad offense again." We oh, yeah, have Miles Garrett. But he's out there, but he's on one leg. He's been injured. Da 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 da. Just like they said with the whole Cincinnati thing, where it was, oh, they held Mahomes to 100 and something yards passing. And they looked like they stifled him. Jaden Daniels comes out. Well, that defense is bad. He didn't really do anything special. They, you weren't saying that last week. But, and the Bengals okay. put up 38 points on the Ravens defense. You know, exactly. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Uh, now, the next question is from Deluxe in the Discord. 34 points in three straight games. First time since who the hell knows. How does it feel? Man, it feels just like Northwest Stadium felt like today while they were giving that ass whooping out to the Browns. Just people doing the wave, people having a good time, people having a great time, people being happy to be a Washington commander slash Redskins slash football team fan again. And like I said, it's just a great time to be a fan. It's a great time to be a fan of this team. We're back. Thank you. Thank you to everyone involved. Honestly, how does it feel? <laughs> um, I don't want to say what I want to say. Um, uh, it feels like the O face, you know, like, Oh, Oh, uh, you know, if you know it if feels you, like sex. If you, uh, if you can, you smelling what I'm smoking, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, yes, that's what it feels like. It, 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 and it's amazing to see it because like you said, this does, I said it last week, it, this doesn't happen for Washington putting up 30 points consistently. Like we were, we're nope. starving for 20 points. Going into these games, it was much more so of how can the defense limit their offense so our offense could put enough points to win, right? Like to this point, you know, going into this game, I picked them to what to win 38 21. Wasn't too far off. I did expect the offense to still be able to get humming. Thought the special teams is going to be a bit big aspect of it and scoring some points here. But I, I think that you called it a low scoring game, what 21 16? I think, yeah, I thought it was going to be 27 to 21. I thought it would be a closer game. I thought it would be a Kind of more of like a defense, not a defensive struggle, but I thought their defense would kind of not really figure out the offense, but I think I thought they would kind of hold them in check for a little bit of the game and then eventually they would get rolling. And I thought that our defense would not really stifle them like they did today, but I thought they would give up a play or two here and there. But for the most part, Ben don't break. It was completely flipped. Offense, ah, we got this. We got them figured out from jump. Defense, ah, nah, they ain't nothing like we got this. So, yeah, man, it was a great game. Absolutely great game. The next question we have is from Tim Towner. Which of our young players improved their game today and earned more snaps next week? And which earned more time standing on the sidelines watching like the rest of us? <laughs> I mean, I can't even really tell you who earned any time to be off the field. Like I, I do. Just feel like... I could tell you right now. Who? Tress Way. Oh, en yeah. Enjoy your time over yeah. there, brother. <laughs> enjoy your freaking time. I love you, Tress. You're doing keep stealing that money, man. Dude, keep, guess what? Keep First time I imagine nobody stealing money. Keep doing it. Best holder in the damn league right now. <laughs> keep enjoying yourself on the sideline. You've earned it, my brother. Like after so many years of service, you yeah, deserve they have that. Pro Bowl holder spots because like he can definitely get on the Pro Bowl squad if he is like a holder. Like he should his, be. His Pro Bowl punting days are over. He's a Pro Bowl holder now. Lock it's it in. Incredible. No, I mean, as far as, like, somebody that deserves to keep getting more time, young guy, uh, I would say just Johnny Newton. I just feel like every time he's on the field, he's, he's always out there. He's learning more and more each rep. He's getting better and better each rep. He's flashing more and more each game. And I think that uh, he's on his way to being a kind of like a Jonathan Allen-esque, Deron Payne-esque type of player down the line. Um, I, I will say Luke McCaffrey uh, with his blocking, of course, on that Ooh. Brian Robinson. Um, the one catch that he had on third down where he runs a out route and Jaden throws it more so on the inside. The fact yeah. that Luke is able to come back and catch that football speaks yep. a lot. But the blocking effort in itself tells you a heck of a whole lot, my man. man there's I mean, a couple of times where I feel like Jaden missed him and they yeah. kind of said it on the broadcast as well. But just watching that live, it was kind of like, oh, hey, McCaffrey, McCaffrey. Jaden didn't see him. It's all good and well, but he can definitely he's, – he's a guy that's going to get more and more involved as the season goes on. I'm just waiting for that breakout game. Yeah, and look, he's not young, but Olamide Zacchaeus, um, his effort 
yeah. on the Eckler run, or was it a, a pass? I think it was it might have been the screen where he fumbles and OZ follows that. The whole, and like if you go back and watch a replay, OZ is running his ass off trying to catch up to Eckler. And thank goodness that he did because then he fumbles and he's able to be the first one to get on that yeah. ball, right? And so that effort, I think, deserves flowers in itself. And so yeah, it, I know he's not one of our young guys, but I'll say OZ. Keep fighting your ass off, my man. Keep working like that because that's exactly what coaches absolutely love, along with Luke McCaffrey. I think they deserve And then Mikey Sammer still, of course, yeah. coming up, hitting Deshaun Watson to a point where that got under Deshaun Watson's nerves. Like, he was pissed off mm-hmm. about that. And I'm so glad that nobody got a flag about it. But that's that's Mikey arriving with violence, doing exactly Michigan what this man. coaching He's staff a Michigan wants. Man. He's a Michigan man. Uh, my pastor, of course, I met with him yesterday. Um, got to talk to him a little bit, got to meet him uh, formally, and he's a Michigan fan. And oh, yeah. he's also yeah, he's also a Vikings fan. So I brought you up <laughs> because I was like, dude, I was like my co-host. I was I was poo-pooing you guys. I was expecting you guys to be I mean, like they be lost yesterday. One. Like they need a quarterback, but yeah. Didn't they win today? No, they lost. Oh, uh, the Vikings. Yeah, yeah, the Vikings yeah. won. I'm oh, just you're talking, talking about, about Michigan. The, uh, oh, yeah, Michigan, okay, yeah. okay. My, my, my bad. Now the next question from Deluxe: Did Mathis finally show results instead of the potential? Oh yeah, hundred percent. Like it's like it's, we talked about earlier, he that was by far his best game at his time as a Washington Commander football teamer. Like hundred percent, definitely. Uh, like I said, definitely his his big standout game. And I feel like it's kind of been those things where it's kind of been building. Where like week by week, you've kind of seen like a play where he made in the backfield or flash where it's like, okay, I, I see you, Big Phil, and it all kind of like just came together and accumulated today. So definitely a shout out to Big Phil. Yeah, of course. And I think what the, what's been happening is teams have been doubling up on uh, Newton because typically what our guys will do is they'll send in Newton with Big Phil because mm-hmm. obviously Newton being on the smaller scale aspect, but he's an incredible pass rusher, very quick hands. He's very strong hands and violent in that sense. But Big Phil knocking over that center today, deflecting that ball, and then being a force in the run game. You saw him doing it right in front of Jerome Ford's face. Or was it Deontay Foreman? It was one of them. But One of those two, but yeah. He, it might have been both, honestly. He is showing the results of what he can be on the football field. I hope he continues to show out because the more depth that you have at defensive line, and Dan Quinn talked about in his postgame presser today, I love a deep rotation, and the more guys that we can have to call up to contribute, the better, and that's what you're seeing. And continue to do it, Big Fella. Uh, you know, Big Phil, I talked a lot of crap about you in the past. Uh, mm-hmm. Didn't say that it was a mistake or anything, but just the yeah, fact that you ain't of, the only one. Hey, but just, yeah. I, I didn't say that we shouldn't have drafted him. My only point was I needed to see more out of him. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah of course. And so seeing this, it, it, I'm so happy for him, Diami Brown, and others. They're doing such a great job of just answering the call when that call comes through. Yep. Uh, next question from Yam Sensei How can our secondary turn these broken up passes into INTs? Should have had at least three today alone. Yeah, I mean, it'll, it'll come. Just, I mean, for the fact that they're breaking up the passes, the fact that they're arriving there, break, getting there, playing the ball well, not getting any penalties called on them while they're breaking up the pass. Interceptions are kind of like sacks, where it's kind of like, it's not like a lucky thing, but it's more of like a right place, right time type of thing, just like a sack. So as long as they're there breaking up the passes, doing whatever needs to be done, making the tackle right when they catch the ball, eventually the uh, interception or the catch punch it out fumble will happen. So I have faith that uh, it's still early week five, but I have faith that eventually down the line, these almost will turn into will be's. I will say this. The difference yam is catching the damn football. Yeah. That's the big difference. Is I saw catch- St. Juice caught one, even though it was out of bounds. I was, had to clap it up for him. I was like, Hey, <laughs> and you didn't see this. Yeah. Which I love. I love. Um, <laughs> but ultimately, it comes down to just catching the damn football. But I will say this to counter off of that the last thing you want to see is a guy going to catch the football. He doesn't catch it. The wide receiver gets it and be able to turn up field because you were aggressive and going after the football and not on the wide receiver, making sure that it was not completed. Right. And so that's the last thing you want. But that being said, if you are going to do that, catch the damn football. If it hits your hands, Ball is life. Yeah. Just like the Terry McLaurin on that fumble. Ball is life. My, I kn- Terry, I fucking love you, dude. You know, but look, the ball is life. You got to make sure you protect it and you go after you. it as much as you can. I want to see y'all hit push-ups, 10 push-ups on the field. And next time it hits your hands, you don't catch it. 10 push-ups on the spot. And I think a lot of credit goes to um, Joe Witt Jr. Yeah. Um, for this game. I know a lot of people talk about that offense, but my goodness, is he doing a good job of putting these guys in the right position, playing yeah. Mikey on the outside. 
David Njoku came back today. Wasn't that big of a concern, uh, you could say, obviously. But it was it was awesome to see the, the defensive dominance that this team is Joe capable Witt of. Joe is walking into Ashburn with his chest poked out like Vince McMahon, like uh, walking down to the ring, like chest poked out. Yep, yep, I'm him. Yeah, now next question, Andy Lockhart. Where is Jeff Driscoll, F. Mariota? Come on, man. <laughs> Come on, man. This this is a uh, this is a joyous a rejoiceful show today after a W. We can't we don't need the uh, the negative t- negativity of the former Agent Zero. Yes, look, he's the best backup in the league. He ju- <laughs> he just got activated off of IR, and I said this on the pod last week. If I thought anybody was going to get called up, I thought it would be Mariota, just because him being the backup, you do want him to be up there and ready. Uh, but I think that Dan Quinn answered it very well in his post game presser. Um, Andy saying that because he's coming off IR, you, he needed to probably snaps just to get back. And you could tell he's a little bit slow, lackadaisical, not on the same speed of Jaden Daniels in the sense of processing, being able to do what he wanted to do before. But it's something that you needed to give him more reps just to get acclimated again. And that's why it makes sense. You know, the game was out of reach. Give him time right. because he has missed some time. Allow him to come out and get into the rhythm again. Uh, so to speak, in case something were to happen, he needs to be ready to go. And obviously, say, he needs to be play better than he did today, obviously. The fact that he was even in the game without an injury, and he was just in the game because it was a beatdown, who cares if he throws a couple incomplete passes? He's in the game because we're having a, it's a beatdown. Let him throw as many incomplete passes as he wants. Let him have a good old time. Let him murder his paycheck. <laughs> My man. Last question we have, and I shouldn't even be asking this, but I'll do it anyway. Because I, I love you, and you deserve it. This is from Andy Lockhart. Ayuk, 115 yards, six catches in the first half. <laughs> you going to give him his flowers, Kyle? No. <laughs> you should be doing that. You get paid $30 million. That should be what you're doing. It shouldn't take you till week five to do it. But I'm happy for Brandon Ayuk. I'm happy for him. I hope you guys got the dub today. I just am saying, our guy's better. That's all. That's all I'm going to say. Yeah, no, I mean, like I told you. He didn't have a whole offseason. It was going to take him a little bit of time, just like the defense. It was going to take a little bit of time to gel, get acclimated. Week five, bam, best performance out there. Best performance of the year, just like with our defense. Holster Domus. No, I'm not giving any excuses to that, man. You should be, <laughs> if you get paid 30 million, you should be ready to go. You know what I'm saying? Like Terry McLaurin, when he came back his contract year, when he got his deal and he wasn't at camp, he wasn't at all this stuff, he came out perfectly man. humming. That man set out, what, he got his deal done, what, like the second week of camp? Like, Yeah, Terry didn't come to train camp. You remember that? We were there. Yeah, and he, know, he, only, he only missed like a week. He, he got his deal like a week into the camp, two weeks into camp. He didn't miss the whole entire training camp in all season. Well, that's a personal decision by Brandon Ayuk because <laughs> they offered him yeah. what they offered him a deal like three weeks before that. And he offered he got he accepted the same deal they offered him like three weeks before. Oh no, it was the same deal they offered him from the get go in free agency in the but beginning I, of it. There was a play on words there. To yeah. Brandon Ayuk. But nah, but at the end of the day, he's a baller. I'm glad he's doing his thing. Yeah, he should, especially with the other weapons that are to take some eyes off him. He should be orchestrating the <laughs> offense the way that he is. So I'm happy for him. And of course I benched him this week. Uh, because I wanted to put him in timeout for the first four weeks. And of You're course, a hater. I am. Look, I am so pissed I had to draft him. You have no idea. And now, of course, <laughs> I put George Pickens up instead of him, and look what happens. Uh, <laughs> stupid. All right, everybody. That's going to wrap us up for this episode. It is a happy one. We are excited. I mean, sky's the limit for this football team at this point. It's It's kind of crazy to say that. Because everyone thought this was going to be like a trial year to see, is mm. Jaden Daniels the guy? I mean, <laughs> he well improved. He proved that, my friend. The new the new answer is, damn, should we uh, add some more pieces and make a run for it this year? Dun, 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 dun. Nope, they shouldn't. Because guess what? That's what Ron Rivera and them would have done. <laughs> they would have they changed the whole plan up and said, no, nope, we need to go for it now. I'm happy. You know what? As much as the talk I wanted, all the pieces that uh, they proved me wrong. I'm happy to say that I was wrong. Yeah, I'm happy that's to all eat. I wanted, baby. That's all I wanted. Was, I'm happy to say I was wrong. They proved me wrong. Just like when I'm, I'll gloat when I say I'm right. I will happily say I was wrong. They are proving me wrong. I want them to stick to the plan that they're doing right now and stay the course. No matter how the season turns out, stay the course. But I will say, if it's for a bargain, they well, yeah, should... yeah, yeah, of course. If it's something that you can't like, yeah. you can't turn down, then of course. But like, I'm just saying, as far as like. Don't go out there and, oh, let's go get Devontae Adams. Let's go get T. Higgins. Let's da 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 da. Like, 
unless it's like a obviously like you said like a JC Horn or like someone like that, it's going to improve the defense side of the ball. But as of right now, like I said, I was glad to say I was wrong. Offense is humming. Yeah, and that's why this Ravens game coming up is probably really massive in the sense of where do you stack up yeah, in reality, yeah, right? Yeah, and this is where you can kind of make those adjustments if you need to. But that being said, I agree with you that we should be patient with it, but not go overbearing like Snyder would have done. I want Rivera would have just sat on his hands. I'm <laughs> saying that that's a Snyder way of doing things, and I agree with you because you don't want to do that. You don't want to mix things up and just throw some uh, things in here that could ruin – some of the aspect of what you have building here, but just saying that this Ravens game is freaking massive. I'm so proud of this football team. They arrived violently. They responded uh, to times where they were bending a little bit. The things were not going as way as they should. I'm a proud damn fan today. I'm proud mm -hmm. of the fan base for showing up and supporting the team and being allowed on defense and doing what they needed to, to make that place a, a very violent um, environment. And so nothing but great vibes fantastic situation that we're in right now heading into a huge week against the Ravens. Nobody's going to be worried about uniforms going up against <laughs> this game, which is exactly what we want. We want yeah. them just focused on the matchup and that's what's happening. We got a big old dub. We whipped up some brownies. Enjoy them. Enjoy the d beautiful and delicious snack of brownies mixed with D Deshaun Watson tears. <laughs> Let's enjoy it. My friends, 34 to 16 Washington whooped ass today. No, no bad vibes on this end. All right, everybody. I'm Kyle. I'm Ho. And we'll see you guys again on Wednesday for a fresh new batch of the Burgundy Zone. Make sure you tune in then for a preview against the Ravens. All right, everybody. We'll catch you then. Washington football. Woo! Peace. What's up, everyone? This is Kyle from the Burgundy Zone. We are releasing our own merch to support the show. If you want to rock the Burgundy Zone logo or you want to see Reed's face on your shirt, we got it. We're starting with t-shirts, hoodies, and zip up. So if you're a fan of the show, make sure you snag one before they are gone. Check out the link in our bio on Instagram, or you can find the link in the description of the video. Thanks again for all your support. Until next time.